Monday division. Well, a net violation that time on Lovett. Puts the ball back over into Wildcat country. And Westminster's Kerry Green serving. Oh, what a monster hit by Lovett's number eight, Harley Sebastian, sophomore outside hitter. She delivered that one with authority. Well, that's the second one she's had, and we're only at 6-4 right now, so we could be in for quite a treat this her, afternoon from some of these young players on both sides. Yeah, her presence is already felt. They get another one to drop. And she just dropped a block in that, that time. Again, smartly done. Yep. Love it. Number five, Gail Jenks. The only, or one of the, uh, one of the few seniors, although we said all upperclassmen. Love it gets that one to fall their way, too. Out of bounds by the Wildcats. Well, a win in the state championship for the Lovett Lions will more than atone for a 2-0 record against Westminster in the regular season. Oh, I think that's... And they're headed in that direction with a 9-4 lead early here in game one. Yeah, very significant lead, and, and really, they really see the momentum. I was kind of wondering which side was going to do that. And Westminster does not appear to have a good attack right now on side out in particular. Well, they get that one to fall for themselves. The Wildcats come back five, will serve nine. Number 12, Ellie Hartman, sophomore setter to do the honors. A running jumper, and it drops for an ace. The Libero, Maggie Sinkler, got her hands on it, but couldn't keep it in play. And there's a good look at uh, junior Ellie Hartman. Running jumper drops in the same spot. This time played by number two, Sarah Carpenter for Lovett. We got another point for Westminster and they're clawing their way back. No pun intended, the Wildcats. Now that ball never cleared. It was a, a, on, on top of the antenna, so it never cleared. So good serving run by Ellie Hartman here. Back set for the big hit by Westminster number five, Mason Rooney. Sophomore right side hitter. She's a lefty. That's going to be effective all afternoon. Yes, uh, very much so. And she can, she can turn and set when she needs to. But she, uh, we just saw an example of a great hit from a right side player. Well, Ellie Hartman on a serving run here. That's going to end with a nice hit from the left side of the Lovett offense. Number eight, Harley Sebastian. She'll go back to serve. So now the question is, when the game is much closer than it was, can Lovett kind of reseize the momentum they had early on in the match? Yep, 10 serving eight right now. Lovett with a two-point lead. Into the net. Wildcats come up a little short on that one. It's a three-point game. Tough serve. Yeah, very tough serve. And it's got the Westminster Wildcats scrambling over here on the left side of the net. As we look at look down on the court here at Marietta High School. Big hit, but into the net by number 14, Jillian Puskas. One of only two seniors on the roster for the very young Westminster Wildcats. Love its third trip to the championship, and they wore T-shirts in warm-up that said, three times a charm. They're hoping that this is the one that brings them that long-sought state championship title. Westminster, on the other hand, has been a winner in the uh, AAA combined division in years past. Yes. In Multiple fact, wins. Uh, from 06 to 08, three consecutive titles for Westminster. Yeah. 
correction on that. And we are at 12 9. Good put away nine again by Mason Rooney. 12. Jillian Puskas with the serve. Sinkler, the libero, keeps it in play. Oh, beautiful dig by Westminster, but we're going to get a call on that one. It's a net violation yeah. on Love at that time. Puskas will go back to serve again. They've drawn within two, the Wildcats. Settling down a little bit, it seems. Jonna Brayden just told her team, settle down. Yeah, they, well, they were a little shaky coming off. A little uh, of that youthful adrenaline. Through. Ace service. Yep, Maggie Sinkler, an ace into the stands. And maybe the fact that this young lady is a senior may make a bit of a difference in the fact that she's coming out and serving tough early on. Yep. Love it. Tried to dink one over the net, but uh, the Cats were equal to it. Puskas with a set. Here comes the hit by the left-handed hitter, but into the block. So, Double hit. Yep. Love it. Turns that one away. And number 19, Janie Price, sophomore middle hitter blocker, will go back to serve. Comes up to the front to talk to her front line a little bit about what she, nope, she's going to go out. They're going to substitute. They're going to take her out and bring in number six, Francis Salmon, junior outside hitter to serve instead. Quick, quick set and hit. Nicely set ball and down in a hurry. Difficult for the defense to react to that situation. So Westminster's very libero. tight here in the early first set, Brian. Yeah, Westminster's libero freshman Carolyn Welsh comes in to serve. Again, a very young Westminster team. Once again, Haley Sebastian from that time from the back row with that put away. And very nicely done. Well, they're hoping it's a lucky number 13, Julia Clayton, senior right side hitter serving for Lovett. They're up by two. Well, a little push blocked by Green. Westminster's Kerry Green, number 10, the sophomore. One-handed block. Back to serve, number five, Mason Rooney. Sophomore right side hitter. Neither team really has kind of captured the momentum so far. Oh, it's been, uh, it's been a Back seesaw, a little awkward at times, but a seesaw battle. Nevertheless, on the scoreboard, it keeps going back and forth. Lovett has held the lead pretty consistently. But when they give away points like that, it may not be for long. So we are now tied, tied up for the first time. I could be wrong about that, but it seems like we're tied for the first time. Lovett had been held, had held the lead pretty, pretty much from the opening serve. Mason Rooney with a left-handed serve into the net. So the sophomore right side hitter hands the ball and a point back over to Lovett. They'll lead by one. Back to serve number two, defensive specialist Sarah Carpenter, a sophomore. The only sophomore on the roster, the only underclassman on the roster for the Lovett Lions. In to the Lovett bench, that one goes. Coach Mary Busick off the bench to talk to her players. And it is Sarah Carpenter still serving. They're up by two now, Lovett. Bang. Into the block, and then over. In one pass, the outstretched arms of Maggie Sinkler, the libero, point Westminster. Smartly done. Ball was blocked. Good look, knowing that the back row was probably open with players from Lovett up trying to keep, play close in defense, and the back was wide open. Carolyn Beatles to serve for the Wildcats. A junior defensive specialist. There's the set and a little dink. Lovett brings it up. Big hit. That's going to go through and into the grandstand. Point Lovett. 
holding on to a two-point lead. It was tied briefly. But this is the way it's gone. One point, two point, and then tied for a moment. Yep. Sinkler, the Libero serving. Good eyes on the Westminster side. Just missed. Yep, just missed. A little more top spin, and that one would have dove for the floor. Here comes Green to serve. Kerry Green, sophomore outside hitter. She's made her presence known already in this one. Oh, that one's Just wide. Yep, that one's wide. Nice idea on a tough serve. A little too much on that one. Green goes out. In comes the Libero, Carolyn. Uh, in goes the Libero, Carolyn Welsh. Wildcats will play defense off the serve of number five, Gail Jenks. Up, down, Sinclair brings it back. Double hit, no, that one came out of the net. Oh, they're reaching and diving and digging and scratching over on the Lions side. That one's going to go into the net. Nice idea, didn't work. Tried to dink it over, but it comes back their way. A lot of, a lot of play at the net that time that Lovett really dominated. I won't say dominated is probably the wrong word, but they really owned that play at the net. They just kept the ball on the Westminster side. Love it Critical serving. point here. Yep, with a three-point lead. Games to 25. We're at 19. For Love it anyway. The antenna foiled that one. Never came. So it could have been a four-point lead. It's back to two. So I think at the four-point lead, I could have seen I could have seen John Braden calling a timeout. But Nice touch by Lovett. There go, take it back to a three-point lead. Yep. Net violation that time on Westminster going for the block. Lovett's Harley Sebastian. One of the uh, three or four very tall upperclassmen players for the Lovett Lions. They've got a formidable wall at the net when they get them all together. They've got three out of the four of them up there now over that block and it's too long. Did anybody touch it? Yes. Off the fingertips of one of the backcourt players for Lovett. The instinct, I guess, Phil, is to go for the ball and there sometimes is. it's not the best decision on instinct. Yeah, that's a, that's a well said, very well said, Brian. And I think that time it would have been tough to let that ball go by if you thought it was gonna hit the line as opposed to hitting out, but it was an out ball. Ellie Hogan, junior outside hitter to serve for Westminster, 18 to 20. Nice dig that went over and won. Caught him a little off guard on the Lovett side for a Westminster point. We've got a one-point contest now. 19 will serve 20 again. Game is to 25. Kind of a strange play that time. A Caroline Beals managed to put the ball back over with all kinds of topspin on the Lovett side. That one too long for Ellie Hogan. Easy point for Westminster, uh, for Lovett rather, they go back up by two. Maggie Sinclair that time was running that back line for Lovett and just told everyone, stay away, it's out. Well, that's the experience of, uh, of a senior Libero. Yes. So, timeout. Westminster, they are down by two with four to play for the set for the first set in this potential five set. It's best of five series for the Georgia High School Association State AA Championship. The Westminster Wildcats trailing the Lovett Lions by a pair. Yeah, it's been back and forth quite a bit, Brian. We've not seen either team really dominate, although early on Lovett seemed to have better momentum. I think what will be interesting now is the serve for Lovett, who they go after on the Westminster side because there is no real dominate, one dominating hitter on the Westminster side, which is kind of how Jonna likes it. He wants to be able to move the ball all around. But Well, so. Westminster has not led, in spite of having defeated the Lovett Lions twice during the regular season, they have not led in this first set. It was tied briefly at 10. But it's been all Lovett in terms of uh, leading this one by one point, by two points, maybe as many as three, if memory serves me correctly. Right. So love it, number six, Francis Salmon, junior outside hitter, will serve. Again, we're at Marietta High School for, it's been our home here for the Georgia High School Association Championships for a few years now. But this year, for the first time, we'll have six championship matches 
will go to McEachern High School on Monday night for the 5A and 6A championship uh, games, and we hope that you'll join us either there or here at Play On Sports. Well, Lever good Carolyn Welsh to serve. Good defensive work, becoming offense for Westminster that time. They bring it back to within one point. Oh, nice touch, almost worked for Lovett. Little bit of miscommunication between setter and hitter that time, and that ball was not in a place where it could be hit. So look where we are. Tied for the second time in this game, but at 21, much more significant than we were at 10-10. Nice hit. Couldn't quite get to it. Well, she did. Ellie Hartman got to it, but it was mis misplayed. None of the other, none of her teammates could hit a, get a second touch on the ball. So Lovett goes up by a single point again. Serving now, it's Julia Clayton, senior right side hitter. And Maggie Sinkler, in spite of her great skills, talent, and experience, couldn't get to that one. Now, that was a nice put away by Kerry Green. Kind Tied. of what we call, depending on the verbiage you use, kind of a 31 set where it's kind of set fast with some separation from setter to hitter. And did a nice job that time creating that for Kerry Green with a nice put away. Yeah, Mason Rooney will serve tied at 22. Game is to 25, but you have to win by two. Looking for the left side corner. There was somebody there. Nice up, over and one. Little touch hits the floor for Lovett. They're up by a single point again with two to play for the game. Nicely done that time by Camilla Grayson with that put away. And a timeout, Westminster. Well, they need to do something. We're that close to the end of this yes. one, well into the zone as Phil Bush calls it, up by two with three to play for the set. And so Westminster needs to call a timeout, see if they can't change something. Well, the last time that John had called a timeout, what they were able to do is come back with a good offensive sequence with Kerry Green with a put away. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if they focus a lot on getting the ball back to her again in that situation. Or, Mason Rooney may try and go over on one because she's a left-hander on the right side as the setter. She may try and go over and put it on one. She hasn't done that yet. Mary Busick holding her Lovett Lions a little longer in the huddle. The Westminster Wildcats have returned to the floor. And they are waiting for the huddled Lions. Again, Lovett's fourth trip to the High School Association Championship, but they have not been successful in earning a title yet. They're looking to make that happen here in 2012. <laughs> nice Tough serve. serve. Wow. Ace. And love it. Sarah Carpenter, sophomore defensive specialist is the one that got that done. She get, gets the ball again. Now they're up by two with one to play. This could be the game. Tough serve again. Oh. Double hit. Yep, carried that one. Double hit. However, so back to set. a one. Yep, back to a one-point game with still two to play for the win. Still set point. Yep. It's three points to win for Westminster. They have to win by two. They're down by one. Tough serve by the Wildcats. Quiets the crowd. And a point by Lovett puts them up by two and gives them the win. That's why they broke out in wild cheers over on the Lovett side very suddenly. We had Westminster making a bunch of noise, and it just shifted right to the other side of the court here. Lovett and the Lions win game number one. Well played match on, excuse me, well played set on both sides, Brian. I think that was interesting, though, is that I felt like momentum-wise that Lovett really had the momentum almost all throughout that first set. But just barely. They were never up by more than three points. You're mostly right. Mostly by one or two. They end up with a two-point victory here in game number one. So they will take a brief pause to get ready for the second set of this best-of-five series. And with that, we'll take a short pause as well here. 
waiting for game number two. Molten USA is proud to be the official volleyball of the Georgia High School Association. And Mizuno is presenting sponsor of the Georgia High School Association Volleyball State Championship. Mizuno, never settle. Well, we're waiting for game two. It seemed like, boy, that first one went by in a hurry. I it's mean, rally scoring, which means that every time the ball hits the floor or goes out of bounds, somebody scores a point. There's no side out in high school uh, rally scoring. But, boy, that one went quicker than usual. It seemed that way. You're right. But what's interesting about it was there were very few long runs of points on either side. And, and the net play was very even, although I really felt like Lovett really controlled more of the net than Westminster did. And you made the comment earlier. It's a tall bunch of Lovett players, especially when they're at the net. They take up a lot of space up there. There are at least four of them that can reach the top of the net standing flat-footed, and that's seven feet. That's, yeah, seven that's up there. And, uh, yes, they have a very formidable front row when they get them all together. Westminster has not been able to get through that block or around it very effectively. Uh, although they kept it close the entire way, they end up losing the first set by two points on a defensive play actually they won a point and then gave up the point that ultimately handed Lovett the victory so they switch sides now the Westminster Wildcats in green will be to our right as we look on here at Marietta High School the Lovett Lions come out in white And again, a very, an upperclassman heavy Lovett Lions team versus a very young Westminster Wildcat team. And all you have to say is Westminster against Lovett. Brian, it doesn't, ma doesn't matter the sport. No, they have been rivals in every sport that both of them play. They brought large and very vocal contingents of fans here to Marietta High School. And uh, we are the ones reaping the benefit of all that. The energy in this room is palpable. And those of you watching at home or wherever you may be, it's the second best thing to being here, I assure you. Love it's number 19, Janie Price standing by to serve. But yes, some very tall players at the net. Right now you have number nine, Camilla Grayson, number 11, Mary Bethany Vincent, two of the uh, four Virtually towering Lovett players. Nice controlled hit from the left side of the Westminster offense. And a mistake, an unforced error by Janie Price, the server. She'll go and uh, have a seat on the bench, not because she did bad, nope. but because their libero mm -hmm. comes in, Maggie Sinkler. A little bit of miscommunication there. And that's one thing that Maggie Sinkler tries to solve as she kind of runs that back row four. Love it. Yep, she passes the ball nicely to the front row. They get it over. And foul went for the empty hole, but couldn't get there. It was a little wide. Just out. Just out. Point. Love it. They're up. They're tied at one. Serving for the Lions. It'll be number 12, Kennedy Crenshaw, Jr., Right side hitter. Just tips it over the net, makes it an awkward play for the Wildcats. And a big block. That's a 9-1-1 play by number nine, Camilla Grayson, number 11, Mary Bethany Vincent. Wow. Combining for a great block. Big block, and there was no place to go on that side of the net. Yeah, you need a block, dial 9-1-1. <laughs> If you're the Lovett Lions. Oh, big hit by Harley Sebastian. 
Got a touch on the Westminster side. Otherwise, that one would have been way long, but she got lucky. And Levitt, once again, seems to really be starting out this set in control. But a two-point lead not, is hardly dominant. Not by much. And yet, and yet, I agree with you 100%. Levitt has the momentum. They seem to have control of the game and the match at this point. They seem to have Westminster just off balance and making bad decisions. Great nice. defensive play. Yeah, Maggie Sinkler. And she's calling the shots in the back row. Knew that one was long, didn't touch it. Well, Maggie Sinkler made one play back there, and then number five, J Gail Jenks, made another one to bring that ball way, way out of bounds from the right side and somehow kept it alive yep. for the, the Lions. Yep, and for Kennedy Crenshaw, the server. Into the block from the Westminster side. And they're successful in putting that one down. Now it was a big block. And if, if it had gone off the blocker and then down, it would have been back to Lovett again. But it went off the, off, the, off the hit, then the block, and then back over to the Wildcats it went. Libero number one, Carolyn Walsh, a freshman to serve for the Wildcats. Two serving four. And a diving dig, ultimately unsuccessful by number 13, Julia, I'm sorry, by number 13, Carolyn Beatles for Westminster gives Lovett another point. They're up by three. A huge lead. A huge lead in this, uh, in this uh, <laughs> match so far. Indeed, a huge lead in this match where the lead has typically been one or two points. Yes. Tied on a couple of occasions in game number one. Tied at 1-1 to open this one. Oh, nice try number by 10. number 10, Kerry Green. But it goes to the net. And that's Camilla Grayson at the net, really along with Westminster coach Jonna Braden exerting her team to settle down, to calm down, to get back to the play that earned them two victories during the regular season over the Lovett Lions. Great up by Sinkler in the back row, and she'll yep. put the ball over. Yep. So. Sinkler kept it in play, delivered it over the net. Oh, a uh -huh. little dink. <laughs> Such a nice play. And a play. celebration by Ellie Hartman. She chose the right play at the right time and made that one fall. Drops the ball over the net, and it been go the, the momentum had been going back and forth so fast on that particular point that it just worked out really well. No one was expecting a ball to be tipped over. Hitter Mason Rooney to serve for Westminster. Nice hit, number nine. The ball had eyes for Camilla Grayson, hits the corner. They'll get the serve back and a point. They're up by four, alert the media. The biggest lead of the entire <laughs> match so far by either team. Although Westminster has never led. They've tied but yeah. never led so far in the match. Not passed well by Westminster. Free ball back over to the Lions. Big hit, number nine, who delivered the last one, but they're good for good to go for that one. Here it comes again. Number eight, sorry, double hit. We're going to get a two-hit call. It's going to go against the Lovett Lions. So basically now what's going to happen, Mary Busick is up talking to the second referee, saying if that was a double hit, then you're going to have to watch this player on the Westminster side with a double hit as well. You're going to call one double hit, you got to call them all double hits. Well, and I happen was, to agree with her. That was a theme in our first match, yes. but we have different referees. So into the net, a serve by the number 13, Carolyn Beatles. Gives an easy point, and the ball back to the Lovett Lions. They'll bring Gail Jenks to serve. We've got the triple towers at the net for Lovett again. But Maggie Sinkler can't bring that one up. Kerry West Green Min goes yep. through again on that fast set. They run a fast offense when they pass well, does, do the uh, Wildcats. And that time, Westminster with a quick set. And Kerry Green got off the ground in a hurry. And now she'll serve.
Oh, somehow they dug that one out of the net. That one's going to go long. Ultimately, a Lovett point. Set up by the play of number eight, Harley Sebastian, the sophomore outside hitter from the left side. She'll serve. Yes. They bring in the fourth of their four very tall players. And once again, the triple towers up front. Tough serve brought up nicely. And long. No touch on that one. Love it up by five. A <laughs> colossal lead. <laughs> it's a big <laughs> one in this match so far. But the momentum which Love it has owned from the beginning seems to be shifting even more in their direction. Another tough serve. Into the block, but it drops on the Lovett side for a Westminster point. Well, no bad plays on either side there. Just one of those times, sometimes when you go, go up for a block and don't quite penetrate all the way, that's what happens. Number 12, Ellie Hartman back to serve for the Wildcats. Down 6-10 to 10 in game two. In a best of five match for the championship. That one goes down. Lovett comes right back to go up by five. That went off the arm of Julia Clayton. Another back, right side hitter. Yep, back to serve number 19, Janie Price. Nice block by the Wildcats. Combination of number 17, Margaret Strickland, and I think it was number five, Mason Rooney, that teamed up for that one. Yeah. Love it getting a little too complacent in their offense right now, always going outside. I would imagine Mary Busick may be asking her setter to move the ball to the right side a bit more often just to keep Westminster from ganging up on the outside. Nice look there at some young fans here in the Marietta High School gym. From the left side, played well by Westminster. Equally well on that dig. Nice block attempt there by Lovett number nine, Camilla Grayson, but it fell on her side of the net for a Westminster point. And again, no pun intended, the Cats are clawing their way back to a three-point deficit. They were down by five, then they give it away. Long. With a big, long serve by Ellie Hogan. It's, again, it's very tough to kind of distinguish between going for tough serves and just flat, you know, giving the ball away. But uh, at this point in time, wouldn't be surprised to see John Brayden call a timeout fairly, fairly soon if Lovett gets back on one of those mini runs. That would be Westminster's coach, John Braden. And, well, no timeout yet. Nope. Ball back over to the Wildcats. Yeah, Mary Busick out onto the floor to... to uh, cheer her players on for well they're doing a great job they gave one up but they're still up by three no shame in their game from the very beginning serve Westminster gets another one with a nice little touch over the net to bring it within two an ever shrinking lead now for the Lovett Lions no. no surprise that Westminster finds ways to come back and they're so smart they put a couple balls over now on two or in very tight. It caused problems for Lovett. Well, we have to go back to the fact that Westminster beat Lovett twice in the regular season. Right. And you have to think that, you know, in spite of the early setback, losing the first set mm -hmm. and trailing in this one from the beginning, that they seem to have found their rhythm. They yes. remember, oh, yeah, that's right. We beat these guys twice before. How did we do that? Oh, yeah, now we remember that, too. Now, love it. Just like that, though, grabs another quick point to go up by two again. Take the momentum back. Well, we'll have to wait and see. They certainly have the serve now. But again, you can score whether you're serving or not in rally scoring. Same offensive sequence tried by Westminster, but Lovett camped out yeah. and waited that time. Yeah, they tried the quick set, but it didn't work this time. 
Net violation, though, yep. on Lovett. Yep, Lovett gives it back. And we are now at a one-point game. This is game two. Lovett up one to nothing so far in a best-of-five match. I'm Brian Drebber along with Phil Bush. Glad you could join us here. Play on sports presentation of the Georgia High School Association Network Championship. There's love at Coach Mary Busick. Talking to her players. And while they take a pause on the court, we'll do the same. Take a short break here before action resumes in our Class 2A championship here at Marietta High School. We've got an injured player being taken off the court. I believe that is Ellie Hogan. It is. Ellie Hogan, the outside hitter, uh, junior outside hitter for Westminster. She's assisted off the court with an apparent uh, leg or knee injury. See if she's able to shake that off. Westminster will bring Gail, Gail Jenks to serve into the net. Rush that one a little bit. We've seen it before. Yes. Love it up by two again. And Maggie Sinkler, their libero. Into the corner and it drops. Heads up play at the net. By number five for Lovett, Gail Jenks. Well, she Just could have put that ball anywhere. She put it in the one place there was not a Westminster player. Timeout again. This time by the Wildcats. Yeah, it was a very heady play by Gail Jenks. Just finding some open floor in the deep right corner, which is just a good place to go. And obviously these two teams know each other so well that, you know, Lovett knows what kind of defense that Westminster's playing and just finds the open spots on the floor. Well, the good players can see the entire floor, they say, and uh, Gail Jenks certainly saw that open corner yes. and just pushed it right over there, and it dropped. Right. Even, the, uh, even the linesman in that corner pointed his flag to the floor in a very excited manner as if to say, good play, that one's in. <laughs> <laughs> I get to call that one. It was good. <laughs> right. Well, it's a, dip, it's a very important time in the set, though, for Westminster because they don't want to have this lead start to stretch out and all of a sudden be looking down five at when, when Lovett's at 20. So a good timeout by John Brayton there. Well, they're up by three with 10 to play, so we're not quite in the zone, as Phil Bush calls it. <laughs> Westminster breaks the huddle first. Lovett shortly behind them. They head for the net. They'll have the serve. Maggie Sinkler in the blue shirt of the Libero player. Again, a designated defensive specialist that rotates in. Very tough serve. There's the big hammer, but it goes a little long. The big hammer by Harley Sebastian. This goes a bit long. So right back on offense with their serve go the Wildcats. Yep, with Carolyn Beatles serving. Junior defensive specialist. They're going to the left side with an attack, but it's blocked by Wildcat number 10, Kerry Green. And along with Ellie Hartman, they really shut the door on Harley Sebastian that time. That's not, not happened very often, so well done by the Wildcats. A second, uh, another serve opportunity for Carolyn Beatles. Nicely passed, oh! Wow. That was a uh, fake with your right, hit it with your left play at the net. I think it's surprised. Oh, soft touch over the net this time by Harley Sebastian. Now, the set was inside, so she didn't really have a good a approach that she could have swung hard. So it's a good idea to get it over and put it in a difficult spot for your defense to try to deal with. Oh, Green with that quick set. Try it again, but Lovett seen it before. Over the block but played by Lovett out of bounds outside the antenna yes it was that goes to Westminster 
It was Lovett's Julia Clayton that tried to get it across the net, but it went outside the antenna. You see that red and white striped antenna that sticks up over the net. That is the uh, out of bounds in the air. That defines the airspace out of bounds. Maggie Sinkler keeps it in play. Again, the soft touch oh, rolls boy. across the net, but played by Westminster. It was an empty corner, but Maggie Sinkler went over there and filled it. Cross net. Off the forearms of Harley Sebastian into the crowd. Very Point nice Westminster. rally. Westminster. Right. Good Tied rally at on 16. Both. Good rally on both sides, Brian. Yep, and another timeout. That's one I'm pretty sure taken by Mary Busick because she yep. sees her team slipping off of what they had been a very strong, consistent run. Well, they let a three-point lead get away from them. We're tied at 16 now. Westminster's timeout was very effective. Yes. Coach Jonah Braden, whatever she had to say, whatever break in the momentum she delivered or helped deliver for her team worked. Now let's see if Lovett can do the same thing. They could come out swinging off this timeout. We love great rivalries, and the fans, young and old, have shown up here for. Oh, they're uh, all here. For this. They're used to it. They probably played. There, there are no doubt former players on both sides of this gym. Absolutely. Who were, who were giving each other the evil eye across <laughs> across the court. Guaranteed. Yeah, and now it's their kids who are playing. They're living vicariously through another generation. Absolutely. Rivalries that have been around for a long, long time between Westminster and Lovett. They both play in the same area. Lovett had a very tough five set win in the semis over uh, the Wesleyan team that hosted them. Uh, Westminster on the other hand a 3-1 win over Greater Atlanta Christian to get here to the final. That's a service well, ace coming out of the timeout. Not at all what Lovett was looking for but a great serve by Kerry Green. She's got the ball again. So Lovett called the timeout, but it worked to Westminster's advantage, at least here in the short term. Two tough serves by Kerry Green. However, Blocked by Harley Sebastian. Wow. A little bit of help from number 19, Janie Price, but it was mostly the number eight, Harley Sebastian, who's back to serve now. And that was an, an emphatic block, I might say. Big block at the net right now for yeah, got the Lions. Three of their seemingly endless array of towers. And that one, though, is an ace serve by Harley Sebastian. The most towering of the towers. Another tough serve. Maggie Sinkler keeps it in play. Sebastian goes up. Nice attack. It's not hard, but still kept it alive. Yep. They're going to set it for the left side again. Sinkler's got to push it over to keep it in play. Looking a little like company picnic volleyball here for a moment or two. Now we're back to some... Nice setting, some nice hitting. And that time it's the number 11, Mary Bethany Vincent. Kind of a strange rally that one was that time, Ooh. Brian. You're right. It kind of went back and forth, back and forth, and trying to and basically both teams just trying to find ways to keep the ball alive. Yeah, got a little messy there for a moment, but in the end, Mary Bethany Vincent delivers a winner, and Harley Sebastian gets another shot at service. Tough serve. And that's gonna work. Technically an ace. Yeah. Because the ball never came back across the net. Two touches on the Westminster side. Yeah, we call those service winners. Yep. It took the team completely out of their offense, and I'm not surprised to see John Brayden call oh. that timeout. Yep, another timeout by the Westminster Wildcats. They're about to run out of them. Yeah. Because they're trailing by three. We got five to play for the win. Here in game two that Lovett has already earned a victory in the first set of this best of five. Right. And not at all what... Westminster came to this match thinking today, as you, as you mentioned, Brian, they've already won. They've already beaten this team twice during the season. So 
I'm sure they didn't think it would be this way, but again, teams get better over the course of the season. Well, and how many times have we seen teams face each other in the regular season, but it's a whole different deal oh, yeah. when you get to the playoffs. Absolutely. And in this case, the state championship final. A lot more at stake. Apparently the Lovett team has taken a while during the course of this year to, to get together. They're, they're mostly upperclassmen. They're senior and junior heavy roster. Only one sophomore of the entire roster. Otherwise, it's all juniors and a handful of seniors. This is the sophomore, Harley Sebastian, who's playing like an upperclassman here tonight. Yes, she is. Or today. I keep forgetting we're indoors. The sun is shining brightly outside here in North Georgia. Oh, a little miscommunication there. Yeah. The mystery player failed to emerge. Well, this, sometimes you get miscommunication between setter and hitter on the setter was going, was setting one ball and the uh, hitter was going for another one. And that does happen. It's not very pretty, but it does happen. The net effect is that Westminster gets the serve and the point. Here we come for the left side attack again, too long. A little too much on it for Mary Bethany Vincent that time. Couldn't make lightning strike twice. Point and serve remains with Westminster. And we're back to a one-point game. Yep, one point with five to play. Well, for love it anyway. They're going to get it back. They go up by two with four to play. Are we in the zone? Not quite. Not quite. Not quite, but Janie Price that time... And Levitt did something I thought they would try earlier, which is going right side on the attack. They hadn't done much in the way of right side attack. And at that time they went. And Mary Busick very happy their team went right side because it just opened up the whole court for the put away. Well, Janie Price goes out and Francis Salmon comes in, the junior outside hitter to serve. Ooh, just kept alive. Wasn't pretty, but it worked. Left, right side, left hand hit for Westminster. Mason Rooney that time showed you what it's all about, being a lefty on the right side. You're, it's your on hand, of course. Your left hand is on that side, and very nicely done. So Westminster now 20, serving 21. That one didn't quite go the direction that Harley Sebastian wanted it to, nor did it go the way that the Lovett team wanted it to. We're tied at 21 now. This one can go either way, and I wouldn't even begin to bet yeah. on which way. I don't think we have a clue right now. Jillian Puskas serving for Westminster. Looking for an empty spot on the floor. Almost found it did, ultimately. Wow. It's a heck of a way to go for it, to get a point. But it's working. We love it when they've had to yeah. use this to that, that strategy. Yeah. Margaret Strickland reached for it, couldn't quite get there. Now we've got Lovett's number 13, Julia Clayton, serving. Up by a point with three to play for the game. Big point Back here. Back set, left-handed hit again this time. A little bit of disorganization. Big point for Lovett now time. Yep, big one. Because now they're up by two with two to play. And, now we're in the zone. And two is like, as you mentioned earlier, two is like ten in the way this game has gone. That's right. Yeah, has there been a, well, the, did we see a five-point lead at one time? I, I can't remember. I think we did, but. That was in game one. I think you're right. I don't think it's been bigger than two, maybe three maybe here three. in the second game. The very definition of a close contest. Maggie Strickler, but wow. the, oh, they kept it alive. Oh my, oh my. Oh, and then it drops for Westminster. And a brilliant play with a little bit of luck on top for Lovett goes Westminster's way instead. We've got a one-point game. Three to play for the win for the Westminster Wildcats. Two points, and Lovett earns the victory in game two. Westminster's Libero is serving. That was fun. And Lovett gets one to fall. Great job by We're Lovett. We're at game point. Continuing to move their offense around now and really giving 
moving more on the right side on offense, which I think is really helping their offense get, stay in sync against Westminster. Mary Busick takes Mary Bethany Vincent out for what could be game point here in game two. Your server is Sarah Carpenter. And Westminster staves off. Oh, no. Yes, they do. Yep, they staved off. And they have a chance now. And that, once again, was Kerry They've Green. got to get three to win. With that quick approach and fast arm putting the ball down. Mason Rooney back to serve. But they need three points to win. They've got to win by two. They're down by three. Tough serve, but a nice pass. 12 to 12, but Lovett's number 12. Kennedy Crenshaw can't handle it. Off the hit by Ellie Hartman, number 12 for Westminster. We're tied at 24. They need two, and it's another timeout, this time by Lovett. Wow. Wow. What else can you say? It's, this has just gone back and forth, and... You know, when you don't have, you know, a single dominant hitter, and there's very good hitters on both sides, please don't mistake me, but this is what you get. You get tremendous defense on both sides, keeping the ball alive. And right now, it's anybody's guess who'll come out of this particular timeout with momentum. If this was side out volleyball, it would be two to two right now instead of 24 all. I think you're because, right. But with rally scoring, the score goes up even when you're on defense, you can score. And it's, you're right, it's been a defensive contest, but it would have been side out, side out, side out, side out up until now, it seems. We've seen a few service winners, but mostly just good defensive play. Very good defensive play on both sides. Westminster's Mason Rooney will serve. Love it coming back to the floor a little slowly. We hope that's with determination. Smiles at the net over on the Westminster side by Kerry Green and company. Mason Rooney serve to Maggie Strickler, the libero. Big hit by number nine. They play it. Into the antenna. antenna. Yes. And there's your 25th point by Lovett. They need one to win game two. They've got to win by a pair of points. We're at 25, which normally we'd be, would be good enough. Maggie Strickler will go back to serve what she hopes will be a service winner and a victory here in game two. They'll go up two games to nothing. But hold on a minute. We're not there yet. <laughs> not even close. Boom. Into the empty spot, number 12, Ellie Hartman. Nice We're tied at 25. You know, Ellie Hartman's not a big hitter in terms of pound straight down, but that is a very smart attack. She certainly found an empty spot on the floor. Now, number 13, Carolyn Beatles will serve. Block. Number 14, Jillian Puskas got most of it. Kerry Green got a little of the rest. And that's all they needed. That's right. And now Westminster's up for the first time. They have their first lead of the match. <laughs> and this is for the win in game two. Puskas to serve. Sorry, Beatles to serve. Carolyn Beatles, junior defensive specialist. Lovett has to go back over in one. Nice touch by Green. Love it. Plays it, it. It's into the net. And there's the winner for Westminster and the Wildcats. They'll even this match at one game apiece. Well, all you can say is wow because, you know, you never really had a feeling that any team was going to dominate the other that entire set. It went back and forth, back and forth. And momentum is like that in most sports, I realize. But volleyball in particular, you typically would see a team kind of take over at some point. But there just wasn't going to happen in that particular situation. Well, what? how much better can it get? We're tied at one in a best of five match for the Georgia Class AA Volleyball Championship here at Marietta High School. And with that, we'll take a pause for the big break between games two and three. And join us, won't you, for what we think is going to be an equally entertaining third game in this double-A championship.
We are getting ready for the third game, and both Phil Bush and I, Brian Drever, have agreed this one's going five. We know yeah. it's going four <laughs> because it's a best-of-five series, and one of these teams has to win a pair in order to take home the Class AA Volleyball State Championship. Will the Westminster Wildcats, who have earned uh, their victory, as you see on the scoreboard, by two points in game two, will they continue to keep the momentum in their direction? Will the Lovett Lions in this seesaw battle be able to maintain and win? Well, as we said, the Westminster Wildcats have uh, beaten Lovett twice during the regular season, and they've beaten them once here tonight. Yeah, and I think it's going to be interesting because the defensive strategies for both teams, I really believe, are you know they could be continuing to be modified as we uh, keep going deeper and deeper into this match but it is interesting to kind of watch these teams because they keep going back and forth and it seems like momentum just shifts back and forth almost like a uh, well like a pendulum it just swings from one direction to the other right and i have to wonder you're much more expert than i is this you know is this by design on the part of both teams or are they just reacting to what the other to what the other team is doing and what the situation calls for. Well, it's really I, quite amazing. Yeah. Well, they're briefly pausing before they resume. We don't want to call it hostilities, although those te these two teams are what could be characterized as bitter rivals in almost every sport, well, in every sport that they both play. Yes. yes. The coaches are rivals in that they have not only coached against one another uh, in the same area during the regular season, but in college as well, in the SEC. And we all know what a what a boiler that is. So we have coaches who know each other well, teams who've played each other before, fans in the stands who pull out whatever, you know, have pulled out whatever dislike for one another they might be able to summon on occasion. Yeah. And uh, for the purpose of this virtual warfare, while there are much more important conflicts going on around the planet, there isn't anything more important to the fans of Westminster and Lovett than what's happening here tonight. That's true. Today. So both teams have taken a relatively lengthy break in between games two and three to come back and it appears as though Westminster's Ellie Hartman will do the honors of serving up the first ball here in game three we're underway that all important first point goes to Lovett big hit by number nine Camilla Grayson there she is smiling at her own accomplishment with coach Mary Busick in the background smiling just as Broadly. So Lovett's number two, Sarah Carpenter. The only soft, well, one of only two sophomores on their roster. Just a bit outside on that, on that serve. Yeah, and here we go, tied at one. What a shock. Yeah, what a shock. <laughs> tied at one, one a, a one-point lead, a two-point lead, and we're ready to declare a national emergency if it goes to as big as a three-point lead by either team. Nice play under awkward conditions by Jillian Parker, but ultimately unsuccessful. Lovett's going to take that one. Substitution as they bring in, uh, and we're happy to say, Ellie Hogan, who was sort of assisted off the court earlier with an apparent injury, has recovered. They just twisted something. Whatever. That's up. Lovett gets a lucky one. A little confusion on the Westminster front line. You know, that wasn't passed well, so it put the setter in a bad position of trying to even go chase it down. It is Lovett's libero, Maggie Sinkler, who is serving. Nice hit by number five on the Westminster side, Mason Rooney. Yep. She finds an almost empty spot on the floor. Lovett can't play it back. We're at 2-3. Yeah, I was a little surprised that ball didn't get picked up. But, uh, again, to your point, if you're, you're, what you said, Brian, is she w went to a deep spot in the, in the defense that she thought would be open, and it was. Freshman Carolyn Welsh, the libero for Westminster serving. And it's a winner. And she serves up an ace, which yep. is not too easy to do against either one of these teams. Three all. Big surprise. We're tied again.
Oh, beautiful wow. dig, and that's what Carolyn Welsh is hired to do. But a double hit on uh, the Westminster side earns the Lovett Lions a point and the serve. Great job by Welsh on that dig. Gail Jenks with the ball, number five. Yeah, it's always rough when a great play like that isn't ultimately rewarded with a winning point. That's long and out of bounds. Good eyes by the Lovett side. Just a bit long, but I think it's smart that Westminster is going to the right side some to keep the defense on the Lovett side honest. Left side attack by Westminster. It's successful. Mason Carol Rooney, I believe, number five. No, Caroline Beatles, oh, Beatles that sorry. time. Caroline Beatles. Mason, well, they're dressed alike. <laughs> Mason Rooney will come back to serve. Sophomore right side hitter. One of the taller players on the Wildcat team. We've emphasized a very young Westminster Wildcat team. Only a, only two seniors on the entire roster. We've only seen one on the court tonight. And it's a net violation yeah. going to be on Westminster on the block. So and Ellie Hogan kept it in play nicely, but ended up ultimately with uh, a violation. Nevertheless, point love it, and they get the serve. Up 6-4. It's Harley Sebastian. Very tall, lean player for the Levitt team. She is one of only two sophomores on a roster heavy with upperclassmen. She and Sarah Carpenter, the lone underclassman on the uh, very experienced Lovett roster. Yes. But they give up a point. And we're back to Carolyn Beatles to serve. Well placed. I'm going to try again with a softer touch this time. And there, ooh, dug up. big hit, but dug up in the backcourt there. Maggie Sinclair, an awkward play. Carolyn Beatles, as I'd like to say, handcuffed by that one. It came right at her chest. She didn't know whether to go under or over on it. She went over and it went down. Yeah, a little bit uh, difficult on the uh, Westminster side. But again, we go back and forth. The, the rallies go back and forth. There's no ball being very, when, it, when, the, when the ball is, basically put over and then shut down, you know, a single play, it's kind of unusual. So much is going back and forth. Oh, that one went under the net. Point Westminster, a one point lead for the Lovett Lions who will receive the serve by Kerry Green. Somehow Sinclair kept that ball alive, but. Yep, good eyes on the Westminster side. It's out of bounds. Carrie Green will come back to serve again. You know, she showed what oh, she could do at the front of the net before with some of the hits right to what I call 31 sets between setter and hitter, but she's doing a very nice job at the service line too today. Couldn't get that one. Kerry Green comes up off the floor smiling. No way. No way to keep that one in play. Went off of her forearms and into the crowd. Here at the end zone. That was kind of a soft point, but we're tied at eight. Score on the screen, not correct here in the stadium. Here in the gym, it's eight to eight. There we go. Over the outstretched arms of Ellie Hartman. Now Mary Beth, Bethany Vincent that time with that put away. Still don't feel like either team has really kind of got significant momentum. Well, there's been no significant lead in this right. entire match. I think three points is the biggest lead that either team has enjoyed. Oh, Maggie Sinkler with another great dig off a huge hit from the left side of the Westminster. And another attack. one. And another one. 
Well, she's earning her keep. <laughs> and another one. She's earning her keep back there. Wake my, Forest. My, oh, my. Wake Forest is going to get a very good player oh, when wow. Maggie Sinkler heads that way. She was proud of herself and justifiably so on that one. It's, it's unusual to get maybe two throwaways oh. in a rally, but you get three. Nicely done by Westminster number 17, Margaret Strickland. She puts one solo through a block. Julia, Jill, Jillian Piscuit, Puskas will come back to serve. One of only two seniors, as we mentioned, on their roster, along with Strickland. Now well, that lights up the Westminster crowd. And why not? We're tied at 10 now. When they get that crazy for a tie game, goodness only knows what will happen if somebody actually gets a big lead. I just don't see any big leads coming. Nope. That one went long, and Westminster, if I'm not mistaken, Lost a point. They're down by a single one again. And Strickland is back to serve. There's a good look at the Libero that had such a great couple of uh, plays a few moments ago. That shot goes just wide. Yep. Nice idea, but just a little bit too much on it. They tried to push it over into the dead corner over there. And Sinkler will serve again up by two. Into the net. She quickly takes the blame. My bad. Don't worry. We'll come back. The very definition of a seesaw battle, although the scoreboard has constantly been reflected with Lovett leading this one, it, the, the play has been so even on both sides of the net that it seems like the score goes back and forth. In fact, Lovett has led virtually from the beginning. Into the open floor, but they dig it up somehow. That's what Carolyn Walsh. Welsh gets uh, gets paid to do, figuratively speaking. And the rally was stopped by a net violation on the Lovett side. Yep. But it, uh, Westminster knew it was coming back. Yeah, otherwise it would have been a Lovett point. Yes. Because uh, Welsh brought it up. Oh, she just tips one over the net. She's serving now. Into the open corner. Was that Sinkler? I think she might have seen the floor and pushed that one over. She's pretty proud of herself over there again. Lovett's number five, Gail Jenks, will serve. They're up by a single point. Long. They watched it go, the Wildcats. There's so many lines on the floor when they set yeah. up a volleyball court in a basketball arena. <laughs> You're right. But uh, it's the blue ones that count. Mason Rooney back to serve with a running sort of jumper. Sinkler handles it. And Westminster calling for a block over the net. Didn't get it. And John Braden is really upset about that. No call. Yep. Harley Sebastian goes back to serve for Lovett. He might have stole one that time. Green with authority. She saw that one coming and fisted it over the net. Yeah. She gets in the air so quickly that she's typically behast the block so fast. And what do you know? Once again, we're tied at 14. I'll be darned. <laughs> what a shock. Westminster's Carolyn Beadle serving. Big hit, but a whistle. Double hit. Yep double hit against Lovett. Westminster will keep the serve and get the point. My addled memory tells me this might be the first time Westminster has led. That one's going way long. This is definitely the first time they've led by two points. And timeout Lovett understandably as things have shifted very definitely towards the Wildcats. 
Well, a two-point lead in this game is a cause for a timeout. Ordinarily, it wouldn't be, but you know, Mary Music seeing things that she just wants to slow down. Well, the only two-point lead that I can recall by Westminster is the two points they won by in game two. Otherwise, it's been all love it in terms of scoreboard and two teams who couldn't be more unlike one another in that love it has a very experienced upperclassman heavy squad with only two sophomores. Westminster, a very young uh, underclass heavy uh, roster with only two seniors, and yet they play so much alike, and it's been such a close contest right from the very beginning. One point lead, two point lead. Do I remember a three point lead vaguely? But otherwise, and that, that should stand out. Yeah, it should. But otherwise, it's been one or two points or tied for this entire match, and we're already in game three. When you got teams that know each other this well, it's not unusual to see it because it's kind of like two boxers who know each other's moves because they've seen each other so much. Holly Frazier 12 or <laughs> something like that. They just keep pounding away at each other. Carolyn Beatles still serving. Bang, big hit, not, no way to play that one. That one almost left the building. And once again, we call the name of Harley Sebastian. She's been really, I think, the most consistent hitter on the Lovett side. Janie Price serving. There's that quick set for, for Green, for Kerry Green, but yeah. Lovett has seen it before. Exactly, and they were waiting for it this time because she knew she was the most likely hitter. It caught them off guard early in game one, but since then they've been waiting for it. And they have some very tall blockers who are capable of stopping it. Nice. Westminster looking for the empty floor. They don't get it. Lovett's got players there to cover. Comes the hit by number 12. Ellie Hartman. Yep, Ellie Hartman gets that one through the block that didn't quite get set. And Carolyn Welsh leaves the floor, the Libero player, bringing more offensive steam to the, to the court. Kerry Green to serve, a running jumper. Sinkler handles it. Can't follow it up on the other side. Car Camilla Grayson. Now they've had a timing issue several times between setter and hitter on the Lovett side. And that time the ball was set for set for a little quicker, or excuse me, the hitter came for a quicker set. Into the net for Carrie Green. She gives one away. We see that so often where a player gets uh, an emotional play and then rushes the next serve, putting it into the net. Just count to three and then put the ball in play. Easy to say, tough to do. Out, yeah. long, and there goes Lovett. Same thing the other way. Hits one too long. Westminster's Ellie Hartman comes back to serve. Trading points. Westminster up by two. Running jumper by Hartman. There's the set and a big hit over Hartman for Lovett. They'll come back and make it a one-point game. And that time Camilla Grayson and setter Gail Jenks had their timing down perfectly. Back to serve for Lovett. Sophomore, one of only two sophomores, it's Sarah Carpenter. 17 for Westminster. Margaret Strickland finds a hole in the Lovett defense. Got a touch. And one of the only two seniors. Yep, one of only two seniors. <laughs> wow. And two teams who couldn't be more unlike one another. Yes. Playing almost identically. Westminster with a 20 to 18 lead. Kablamo. Oh, somehow, but they aren't going to be able to hit it four times. Right. Lovett got a good drop on that one. Westminster played it well, but they needed four hits to get it over the net. They're only allowed three. Yeah. 
Well, there's a net violation, I think, along there as well. So I don't think it really mattered, but it doesn't matter. We got a one-point game yet again. Yep, one point. Quick hit by number 17 again, Margaret Strickland. So she's taking a page out of Carrie Green's book, and she's doing that quick set, quick hit at the net. 21, serving 19, Westminster with the lead. That one goes up almost to the lights. There's the quick set again for Green. But Lovett played it, and uh, just a little push over, a little touch over the net. Caught them off guard, and they couldn't bring it back. Three-point lead, and a timeout, Love it. Well, now they're down three with three to go. So We're in the zone. There, it, it basically is a point in time now where Westminster has made just enough plays, particularly on defense, that really, they, that's why they're in the lead. Westminster needs four points to win. On the other hand, Lovett has got to come back and score six against those four. So love it. Down. Sorry, Westminster needs three points. Three points to, to win. win. I'm looking at the scoreboard uh, on our screen, but here in the here in the uh, in the gym, it's 22-19, Westminster. So three points to win for Westminster. Six points to win. They have to shut out Westminster for six straight points in order to take the take the victory on the Lovett side. And that's going to be awfully hard, given what we've seen in the first two sets. Well, that, that glacial momentum shift in game two by Westminster, you know, there's been no, no dramatic momentum shift in either game so far, nor in this third one. Right. But uh, that glacial momentum shift from game number two seems to be carrying over a little bit here in the, in the waning moments of game three for the Westminster Wildcats and head coach John Braden. The Wildcats are serving up by three. Running jumper by Libero Carolyn Welsh, the freshman. Big hit off the outstretched block. And once again, Harley Sebastian. She's become the go-to hitter if she wasn't already for Lovett. And particularly in particular side out rotation, that's the player that they're going to try and go get the ball to. Nice serve. But a Westminster point is the end result. And coming back is Mason Rooney. Again, up by three with two to play for the win. Maggie Sinkler handles it on the Lovett side. It goes wide. Somehow Harley Sebastian brings it across. There's a nice hit from the right side of the Lovett offense. Number 19, Janie Price. Well struck ball on the right side. Well, they come back to make it 23-21. Running out of time though. You can't keep switch, can't keep swapping points, so. Nope. Because Westminster will win that battle. Yes, they will. Harley Sebastian back to serve. She's much more effective at the net, but she's also been good at the line as well. Long. Out. That's a point they did not want nor need to give away. Right. They've given Westminster the serve with a single point to win game three and go up two games to one for the championship. Westminster's Carolyn Beatles with the opportunity to up. She has to play it back the other way from the backcourt. Sinkler keeps it alive for the left side attack. Somehow Westminster brings the ball up. And Lovett does the same. They go cross court. To the net, big hit by Green. It falls on the Westminster side. Lovett staves off. The Westminster win. They get the serve, trailing by two. Well, a big block that time when Lovett had to have it on Kerry Green. Yeah, but see now they've got to go all the they've got to get four points yes. to win. They must and their timeout Westminster. So with the momentum ever so slightly shifting back and forth as it has all match long, Westminster now calls a timeout here in the uh, in the waning moments. 
Well, there's no time clock, but you said they're running out of time. Yeah. Meaning well, exactly what? Meaning when you're down by two points and there's only there's only two to go, you can't afford to keep swapping points. You've got to get a couple of points in a row to make this back into an even match. Well, the situation for Westminster is that regardless of who's serving, they can score, and they only yeah. need to score two points. Lovett, on the other hand, must score at least four, shutting out Westminster in the process to do so, to win. The Wildcats come back to the court. The Lovett Lions a little slower in breaking their huddle. Let's see who's got the determination here for these final couple of points. Twenty two serving twenty four score is backwards on our screen. And Westminster will win game number three by a score of twenty five to twenty two. So they have earned two straight victories here in this best of five. And that elusive momentum seems to belong to the Westminster Wildcats at this point. Yes, it does. And it's all based upon just a few individual plays. It's not about a consistent run of points that either side has had. But Westminster made enough big plays, especially at the net and in the backcourt, where they were able to take the advantage in set number three. Now they'll switch sides. Westminster in green will be in the far court as we look at it from this view. And love it. The Lovett Lions in white will uh, play left to right as we look at it from midcourt. They'll be in the near side court where most of the Westminster fans are above them. This one is too tough to call. Yes, I, uh, you know, those scores, uh, it's been just as close as that during the match and a lot of long rallies have gone on and neither side has really been able to say they they have kind of owned the long rallies they've gone back and forth back and forth continually throughout all three sets well i'm joking of course but you better have your bookie on speed dial for this one <laughs> if you're conducting a friendly wager you might want to change your bet about every other play because you this just don't is, know it's gone both ways it's gone back and forth relentlessly there you can see look at the close scores 25 23 game one 27 25 game two the necessary two point margin of victory a huge commanding crushing performance by yes. Westminster to win by three in game three right and we're being I'm being facetious it is just so enjoyable to watch no matter who wins we're having fun it's been that close and it's a great match and very well played so it'll be interesting to see who comes out with momentum going into this fourth set well based on history I predict a one nothing love it lead <laughs> <laughs> if where it goes from there I can't begin to say but Lovett has come out to take a one nothing lead in all three games by my recollection. Right. We don't have a an official statistician sitting here with Phil Bush and myself Brian Drever. Glad you could join us at home here on the GSA GHSA network. Or wherever you're watching from. On your mobile device. The Wildcats. Easing back onto the court. I think the one thing I would say is if I'm love it right now one of the things I might try and do is clearly Harley Sebastian has been a dominant hitter no question about it but what I might want to try to do is to go to the right side a little bit more in the middle a little bit more to loosen up the Westminster defense some. All right coach Phil Bush has spoken let's see if not the saying Lovett it's going to work. Let's, let's <laughs> see if the Lovett Lions were listening in. Maybe they have somebody at home watching our broadcast and they're phoning up I doubt that coach uh, Mary Busick right now
We have a Janie Price fan in the stands. Janie is our hero sign being held up there. Just as there's been no dominant team, there's been no really dominant player no, either. It seems really like hasn't. they've really shared the love on both sides of the net. Yes, and uh, we'd like to say, for instance, that Carrie Green uh, for Westminster is, has been a dominant player, but she's she's gotten in her hits, but she's not by any means the only one. No. We'd like to say that, as you said, Harley Sebastian has been the dominant player over on the Lovett side, but uh, she's not scored the majority of points for her team by any means. But they score the first one. <laughs> I'm like money in the bank, aren't yes, I? Yes, you could have won that one there, yeah, Brian. I predicted that, was that a... one nothing love at lead because they've done so in all three games so far. Make it four in a row. They've earned a one nothing lead to start the contest. Now where it goes, I've already said I couldn't begin to predict. They give away the serve. Janie Price hits all but a home run, which in volleyball is not a good thing. No, it's not. And, you know, I'm sure both coaches were frustrated saying, golly, can't we ever establish anything consistently? Ellie Hartman serves. Lovett takes the point anyway. It was a good job that time at the net by They'll Gail Jenks. Two to one. Gail Jenks did a nice job that time pushing that ball back against the block and keeping the ball on the Westminster side for the point. Love it's Kennedy Crenshaw. She has seen limited action thus far this evening. Let's see if she can be effective. Maybe that's the difference. They need to just insert one slightly different player, one little different element into the lineup. So far it's working for Love. It. No, they keep it in play. Somehow Westminster pulled that one out off the bench. Now it goes into the stands. And another love at point. They'll go up three to one. So I don't know. Kennedy Crenshaw comes in. Lovett goes up three to one. Seizing the momentum back again. And an ace. She serves an ace to make it four to one. That is by far the biggest lead early in a game that we've seen yes. in this entire match. Absolutely. Okay. She goes to the same spot. This one's too long. Nice run, though. Yep. Very nice. Okay. She's made her point. Kennedy Crenshaw has come in and had an immediate impact in the Lovett Lions lineup. Now let's see if she can continue to play well on defense. Jillian Puskas serving for the Wildcats. Nice set for the left side off the fingertips of the server Puskas. Otherwise it may have been too long but again the instinct is to go for the ball. Yes and it's a good instinct when you're playing in a match like this where it's so close. My instincts run 180 degrees from that. My instinct is to duck, run, hide, curl up in a ball, and, and let it go somewhere else. Now that's why we're back behind the, uh, exactly. the table here. Over. <laughs> Harley Sebastian, up easily a foot over the net. Just nice block. Drop that one down. That was an offensive block. 6-2. A four point lead is historic. Nice recovery by Carolyn Beatles. But ultimately another love at point. Camilla Grayson and setter Gail Jenks have got their timing down now and a five point lead is something I don't think we have seen. It, no, it's four point was history. This yeah. is epic. Oh, don't go for that one, Maggie Sinkler. It went long. She tried but missed it. That was her good luck. Love it serving. Number one. No, that's... Uh, Sorry, Westminster, Westminster serving. serving. Their libero, white shirt, had me confused. Carolyn Welsh, the freshman. All right, the Lovett players consoling one another. The Westminster players congratulating one another. That's point Westminster. They brought it back to a much more believable three-point deficit. Harley Sebastian block. 
along with Camilla Grayson. That is a big block. Yeah, the, the two towers. They have three, at least three they can draw from. That was the 89 combination. And of course, as you called it earlier, the 911 combination. Oh yeah, they can bring in Mary Bethany Vincent and make it 911. Carrie Green. She's almost got a patent on that move. Well, it's been the most consistent side out weapon for Westminster throughout this match. Five serving eight. Harley Sebastian's going to get the tip again. They can't get to it. Again, it might have been long had they not touched it on the Westminster side, but might doesn't count. Well, too many balls have come so close to being in or out in this for anybody to be critical of a player for making that play because I tell you, it's a lot tougher not to play him than it is to play him. Setter Gail Jenks serving for Lovett. Sebastian with a big hit, but Westminster handled it. This time it's the number 10, Broughton Barry. We have not called her name or number the entire contest. She delivers in the clutch. No, I'm incorrect about that. Sorry, it was Janie Price, 19, not 10. Misread that number. My apologies. It's okay. And, and my we congratulations have to Janie Price and her fan. <laughs> <laughs> and a timeout taken by Westminster because yeah. it's well, been again. too close. A five-point epic lead. Yes. It's biblical at five points. Four points was historic. Five points is biblical I in this match. You. But you got to give, I'll tell you, I give Lovett a lot of credit for coming out of the last game and immediately kind of getting back on their game. I don't remember if it was on the record that you said this one was going to five. We both no. agreed that it probably would, and we knew it would go to four. We're in game four right now. If Lovett turns the, turns the deal and wins this one, we will indeed be in that almost sudden death 15-point game five. Yeah, it goes by so quickly at 15. Yeah, and they have to play to 25 in each of the first four games. But in the fifth and deciding, ultimately deciding game, if necessary, it's a 15-point game, and it does go. It's like the lightning round. Gail Jenks, the setter, back to serve. The free ball back over to Lovett. Yep. Maggie Sinkler handles it. Here comes Harley Sebastian. It's not going to matter. Play. It's going to be a double hit yep. on Lovett. Now those double hit calls are getting a little less frequent, but uh, we're still seeing a lot of them nevertheless. Westminster's Carolyn Beatles to serve, number 13, junior defensive specialist. Harley Sebastian with a soft touch this time over Beatles or short of Carolyn Beatles for a point. It's a smart shot because yeah. she's been hitting the ball hard and whenever you hit the ball hard what always opens up for you is a short soft shot. She'll go back to serve now she being Harley Sebastian into the net. Well, you hate it when players give up an opportunity like that. She could have come off a great play to score another point, but instead she has to go on defense. And Carrie Green for Westminster will serve. Great offensive player into the net likewise. Wow. Two in a row, one on either side. Okay. We'll call that a wash. Yes, that's about what it is. That was a gimme on both sides. Janie Price holding the ball, but she goes to the sideline, and in her place comes number six, Francis Salmon, junior outside hitter to serve instead. Substitution by Coach Mary Busick. Harley from midcourt too long. Yes. Good idea to go back back row to Harley Sebastian. She just put a bit too much on that one, but I like the idea because I think Mary Busick has decided, well, I know where my big hitter is who's having a good match. I'm going to keep putting the ball in her hands. 
Well, and she might. Uh, she didn't have the angle to get that thing to drop right. without somebody touching it on the Westminster side. And uh, Harley Sinclair watches that one land just, just outside. Out. <laughs> I mean, not by much. So well, she's got the eagle eye that a great uh, defensive player, a great libero does. Kennedy here Crenshaw. Is, yep, here comes Kennedy Crenshaw again. Now she wove a little bit of magic in the early going here. Which still love it. Oh. Love it's up by five, now by four. They gave as uh, Kennedy Crenshaw gives one away, serves it into the net. Well, in defense of Kennedy Crenshaw and anybody who's come off the bench to serve, it's tough coming off the bench to serve. Ellie Hogan, she gets hers across. And a little touch at the net by number five, Gail Jenks. And again, a little bit of luck, but a good eye yes. by Sinkler. He, she couldn't get to it, but it went long anyway. Lucky she couldn't get to it because yep. Lovett gets another point. If she'd have touched it, it would have been a point Westminster. Right. We're up by five again on the Lovett Lions side. And Sarah Carpenter, again, one of only two sophomores on an upperclassman heavy roster by Lovett. There are only two seniors on the very young Westminster team. Well played by Lovett. Nice hit. Good set cross Going court. All the way across for Harley Sebastian again, but it's still in play. Okay, whistle. And Westminster gets that point with a net violation, I'm going to guess. I don't know or if it was just the ball came over on the block. I'm honestly not sure because I didn't see the referee make the mark. It was kind of off the elbows of uh, unbelievably of Harley Sebastian. She was up that high. Ooh, that's going to be a lift. Point Lovett. So we trade. It's a back row attack because okay. the setter is in the back row and she can't attack the ball when she's in the front row. And as soon as the block block ball touched her hand, it automatically becomes back row attack. Okay. Well, I thought it might have been a carry or a lift or could whatever. have been. Yeah, but you're probably right. That's why you sit over there. <laughs> Harley Sebastian shows she's got the soft touch, but Westminster keeps it in play. Oh, nice block on the Westminster side. Janie Price tried but couldn't do it. Yeah, and yeah, Carrie Green. Carrie Green again. She has been a dominant force at the net. Yeah, she does it all. She can put it away. She can block it. Mason Rooney to serve for the Wildcats, trailing by four, 11-15. Almost handcuffed Sarah Carpenter. That's wide. Yeah, that's wide though. Love it ultimately. Uh, Harley Sebastian ultimately a little too much on it. She goes cross court. Doesn't get the touch. And the signs are starting to sprout <laughs> out. That was a Mason Rooney fan. There's one Mason yeah. Rooney fan, one Janie Price fan. So even the fans are equal on both sides of the court. Nice touch by Lovett, and that was Janie Price. That's a very smart shot. The front left corner is almost always open when you have two blockers at the net and who are going to go after the middle. So just a smart shot, putting it in an open spot. 16 serving 12. Too long. Just a bit long. And now we're back to that magical as it is, five-point lead. Five-point lead. Both Sarah Carpenter and Maggie Sinkler watched that one go a little too far. Now, <clears throat> timeout, Westminster again. And it's usually an indication of a coach who feels like their team is in a little bit of difficulty if they're the one that calls a timeout. Yeah, uh, you're you right. You call timeout when you're leading by five. Typically not, no. But I think that's a good job there by the Westminster coaching staff and trying to think about what offensive play they have coming out of this next serve. And the young fans abound here in the Marietta High School gym. Some of them are a little bashful. And then again, you have your... And some of them are not. You have your stu students who... Uh, that word probably isn't in the vocabulary no. just yet. No. Bashful does not enter the picture with some of these student fans. Hmm. 
Coach Mary Busick. She didn't say read my lips, but <laughs> clearly we could tell that she was uh, more or less saying, keep doing what you're doing. It's working here in game four. Well, I'm sure she also talked about where the ball might go from a yeah. offensive perspective. Games two and three got away from them by narrow margins. They've got a uh, commanding five point lead in this one. Nice by Harley De uh, by Harley Sebastian. But the ball's still in play. Here comes the set. Nope. Not set well. Oh, nope. Nope. Set into the antenna. No way for Harley Sebastian to play that one. And that's been unusual because most of the balls have been very hittable on both sides of the net. Yep. Yes, indeed. Carolyn Beatles back to serve for Westminster again. Nice. Beautiful shot. Janie Price has a knack for that awkward decision uh, that well, well a good decision to make an awkward shot work well yeah that the, the only problem is that was Gail Jenks that did that Brian I'm sorry that's the setter <laughs> uh, I'm sorry it's the num number five setter who had, has the uh, has the knack and she's a smart shot well never mind <laughs> Good nice. eyes by yep. Lovett. Yep, and that is uh, Mary Bethany Vinson, who's come back in after quite an absence. She's been off the court for a while. She had an immediate impact early on with uh, teammate Camilla Grayson. Grayson, likewise, is on the bench, and it's been Harley Sebastian, who's back to serve right now, who has taken up most of the uh, of the effort by the the front line tall blocking players for the Lovett Lions. There's a nice. A nice play. That was well. Not hurt. that I want to make any predictions, but when you're up seven with only five to go, yeah, it's, it's close a to long, the zone. Long way back for Westminster. We're very close to the zone. That was Julia Clayton, number 13, making that play, and she's come in late in this contest and had an impact. Sinclair, all oh. almost she dug it up, but Janie Price couldn't quite get to it for the second hit. And that's going Westminster's way. We're down to a six-point margin now. Well, Maggie Sinclair has touched so many balls in the back row, both passing and defense. It's been really impressive. 14 serving, 20. Carrie Green in the backcourt delivers it up. Up goes the 11. But Westminster finds a way to take it back to the other side. That one's going to run the net and drop on the Lovett half of the court. Point Westminster five point game and this starts their comeback potentially yep they got a long way to come back though they do they've got to double the score of the Lovett Lions in order to win this one they need 10 the Lions only five Sinclair oh they keep the it in play Sinclair again bang Janie Price hits it into the net point Westminster and a timeout, love it. And Mary Busick saw her team starting to make some mistakes that she knew that they had not made to get them where they were. And now was the time before Westminster kind of crawled back all the way back. Now was the time. Yep. Plug a little hole. Plug a little hole in the uh, in the leaky in the leaky boat yeah. for a moment. Get that thing back on an even keel get them back to what they did to get up get to that five point lead they still own a four point advantage four point lead with five to play we're getting close to critical zone well Westminster is eagerly back onto the court ready for anything Lovett wants to bring them they're eager to get this thing back back in motion they had the momentum on their side Now the Lovett fans trying to ice the server, but I don't think there's any ice in Carrie Green. No, no, we haven't seen it yet. She's got ice water in her veins. She's very calm, cool, and collected over there. Here comes the big hit into the net. Some, never came. some block and a little net. Yeah, no, that one never came, and that was called four hits and was not blocked. Yep. Okay. So, point over to Westminster. Well, it's a yeah, good call. It went, it went into the net. The blockers were there, but it was mostly net that brought exactly. it back to the Lovett side. And that's why the call was made the yep. way it was. You're yep, right, indeed. Brian. And look what we have here. A we three-point right. game. Yep. 
A three-point game. Kerry Green serving. If they can tie this one up. Tough and they, serve. Uh, oh, man. Wow. They're back to within two. They're back in the game. A five-point lead with five to play for Lovett was looking pretty grim. Yes, they have it brought was. it back. They have shined some light on their opportunity here in game four. Even the big hits are being played by Westminster now. Little touch. They're ready for that as well. They deliver one of their own. We're in one. And Ellie Hartman just popped that ball right into an open spot in the floor, and it's full-fledged panic on the Lovett side now, I have to say. They were they thought they were going to five. Yeah, well, Coach Mary Busick comes out trying to keep that panic from settling in. And Kerry Green is serving one. Maggie Sinkler puts it in play. They need a point here badly, and they don't get it. We're tied at 20. Timeout, Lovett again. Wow, what a turn. And now instead of congratulating her players and and giving them the attaboys over there, now there's a little bit of chastising going on by Lovett coach Mary Busick. Well, you want to remind your team how hard you fought to get in this position and you don't want to give it away now. Now we're watching Westminster coach Jonah Braden. All business over there on the Wildcat side. It certainly ain't broke. Don't try to fix it. Just go back out there and keep doing what you're doing. That's right. Keep serving up those winners, Kerry Green. Kerry Green's serving run here has been remarkable. Well, she brought him back from a five-point deficit to even at 20-all. That's a cool customer right there. Yes, it is. Another tough serve. That might have been long, but Man. they went for it anyway. Sinkler doing what she does best. Keep the ball in play. It's not touched. Nope. And Lovett gets the call. And Lovett looking for and thought they had a touch. They did not get it. No, they didn't get the call. Oh, the Lovett fans went crazy there for a minute. Yes, the Lovett fans went crazy. And then the crazy. Westminster fans went crazier. Kerry Green's serving run is still alive. They're up by one. That's been a long time since Westminster had the lead. If ever in this game. Okay, Lovett finally gets a point, and we're tied at 21. And that was an awfully long run if you're on the Lovett side. Man, that was... What, seven point, a seven point run for Westminster? I believe so. Janie Price. It's gonna be a free ball back over to the Wild, the Lions. And a free ball back over to the Wildcats. Yes. That one's going long, wide, far, and everything. Love it, likes it. It was a good idea. To go down the line. Just a little too much on yes. it. Yes. So, love it up by one with three to play for the game. Oh, on the line? No. Oh, no. why? Just out. I thought it was on the line, but well, line's person right there. And what they you and I out. thought doesn't matter. The linesman called it out. The Westminster fans are booing from up here in the end zone, and I think they had a better look at it than anybody. Yeah. No. Doesn't think, matter. Well, I think whether it had been in or out, they were going to call it out. Only one guy counts. Exactly He's got right. a red flag in his hand. <laughs> Love it up by two with two to play. That one's long. They're up by one with three to play for wow. the Westminster Wildcats. And for them to come back, hmm. for them to come back down as they were, one game to none, to win three straight, if that happens. Up, oh, another whistle. 
Double hit. Yep, double hit by Westminster. And the Lovett Lions go up by two. We are at game point. If the Lions win this one, we go to game five. Not passed well. Kept alive by Janie Price. And Westminster gets it to go down. Sinclair can't get to it. They'll get the serve back. They need three points to win. 23 will serve 24. Again, game is to 25, but you must win by two. It could go to 50 points if nobody has a two-point margin. Yes, this is true. Let's Ellie Hogan goes back to serve. Carrie Green left her a tough act to follow. And from the left side, there is the winner for the Lovett Lions. For the record, Mary Bethany Vincent comes off the bench in the late going to deliver the winning point for the Lovett Lions. Wow. But it's only a game winning point. The match is yet to be decided by a fifth game. Well, when you go to 15, everything accelerates. So every point counts for more. It does. Almost twice as much. It really seems that way, Brian. And what's also going to happen is we're going to see refer we're going to see coaches call timeouts very quickly because you won't see a team get up three and four before a timeout's called because you just can't afford to have that happen in a rally score game that goes to 15. Of course, the biggest lead we've seen in any of the four games has been five points, and timeouts were called on those occasions uh, a couple of times. But, yeah, this one's going to be interesting. Just to, to bring you forward, if you've joined us late, Westminster defeated Lovett twice during the regular season. They've met each other before many, many times. They are, well, bitter is a word I'm hesitant to use, but they are enthusiastic rivals in every <laughs> sport. The coaches have played against each other, both on the college and here at the high school level. Former college coaches now, uh, now facing each other at the Georgia High School Championship. Fans equally vocal and equal in numbers on both sides and both end zones of the court. A well-played game on both sides of the net that has been very entertaining. This match is going to be a tough act to follow uh -oh. in our Georgia High School Association championships. This is the double A championship. We still have triple A, quad A to go today, and mm -hmm. then the 5A, 6A championships on Monday at McEachern High School. Join us there, won't you? Watching at home or wherever you are is... Well, it's a poor second best to being here in this room today. Well, I'll tell you, this match has really, really set a standard for everybody else to follow because both teams have been so evenly matched. And it isn't, it well, isn't that either team is playing poor volleyball when the points go one way or the other. It's just the other team is making a play. Can you picture a Hollywood movie and this is the script? Who could write a script better than this? You can't do it. I'm okay. telling you. The only thing that, you know, the only thing that, that you would need would be more contrived drama. Yes. Because you couldn't come up with any more real drama than we've had here in this one. You know, if you had an airplane flying through an ice storm with the magic serum <laughs> that's going to cure the, the star player's mother at the, or something, you know, you could come up with some bunch of baloney. Yes, you could. But there's no way in the world you could come up with more real drama than we've delivered here. Okay, here we are. Game five. The first serve is about to be delivered. And both grandstands of fans are trying to get their licks in before it even starts. There are the Lovett fans in their significant numbers. Somebody bought a box of, bought a, a crate of pom-poms and handed them out. <laughs> and there's one guy, one brave guy over on the Westminster side with Lovett pom-poms. That's a brave guy. Yeah, he's right behind the scorer's table. Maybe you can spot him over there when he stands up. Now the scorers are out on the floor. The referees are ready to go. They're making sure of every little detail at this point. The linesmen are taking their positions, and there's the horn. 
that says time to go. Now one lineup might not want to say change, but Kennedy Crenshaw is in for Mary Busick in the back row, number 12, as an extra defensive player. And number 12 on the opposite side, Ellie Hartman will serve the first ball. Handled appropriately by Maggie Sinkler, the libero. That one's long. Looks like a good swing, just Error. a bit too much on it. Yeah, errors of commission. You'll uh, you'll take those every time. You know, if you make a, a, a mistake being aggressive, I think a coach will take that over standing around with your hands in your pockets, figuratively speaking, and letting one hit the floor. Over. That was a little bit of a prayer, if I may call it that, by Mary Bethany Vincent. She hit it in the general direction yeah. of the Westminster players and found a little seam in the block. It's a 2 nothing lead for the Wildcats. And I know it doesn't sound like much, but yep. it is a lot. Okay. Free ball back over to Westminster. And Sinkler digs one up. They need a point. Love it. I'm already feeling what you said. Every point in this one is magnified. There they get a break. A long ball by the Wildcats gives Lovett a point and the serve. The point being much more important than the serve. Lovett, Sarah Carpenter, the sophomore. One of only two, again, only two underclassmen, only two sophomores on a team heavy with juniors and seniors. Sinkler handles that one. From the left side, soft touch. Kennedy Crenshaw. Wow. Ooh, boy, the fact that that one is still in play. Oh, we're going to get a call. Net violation or an encroachment violation. I'm not sure, but it's at the net. By on Westminster, we're tied yes. at two. And again, there's so much back and forth play here. There's no, not, not what you might traditionally see, a big banger type hit. I think we've reached the limit of back and forth. There could not be any more back and forth play than we've had Look in this at one. Look at that. Look, yeah, indeed. Amazing. Off the floor, laying on her back. Lovett gets one off the hands of the Westminster players from the left side attack. And Sarah Carpenter gets another chance to serve 3 2. Take your time, young lady. Make it count. She didn't hear me. She had a nice serving, several pretty good serves there, though, and now she's in to play defense, so it all matters. I don't want to say you could see it in her eyes, but she she and she visualized that one as an ace, and instead it went into the net, handing the point and the serve back to Westminster, where junior Ellie Hogan will do the honors. To that left side attack, it's successful. Mary Bethany Vincent. The number 11. Half of that 9-1-1 combination with Camilla Grayson. Grayson goes to the bench. Janie Price comes in. Number 19. And Maggie Sinkler will serve. She looks for the left side. Kennedy Crenshaw sets it. Oh! Janie Price couldn't get the block to fall. Tied at four. Well, it would be unusual or surprising that we weren't tied up at this point in time. Freshman, Libero, Carolyn Welsh to serve. Handcuffs Kennedy Crenshaw. That is so awkward when that ball comes just chest high. Your hands are straight out in front of you. They're not up. They're not down. Right. It's a very tough serve. Yeah, that's just, if you could do that every time. You could write your own ticket to the college of your choice. Through the block. Crenshaw. Got a whistle on that one from the down referee. Net. Yeah, net violation. Somebody was under the net. Yes. That's what happened on the Lovett side. Therefore, it goes back over to Westminster. That's yep. exactly what happened. Yep. Point Westminster. They're up by two. It's huge. Surprised we it. don't hear a timeout whistle. I'm, it's it's got to be in Mary Busick's mind. Carolyn Welsh, the freshman libero. To serve, tough one. They play it. Little runner by Harley Sebastian. And a 
Now we got a timeout. Love it. Had to be. Yeah, down by three. Yeah, Westminster has taken, I mean, the serves from Ellie Hogan, you cannot say enough about how tough these serves have been three in a row. And to go from 7-4-4 to 7-4, it doesn't sound like very much, but in this match, it's a lot. Well, they're halfway, almost anyway, halfway yes. to a winner. And one team or the other is going to earn the AA state championship by winning this game five. It ultimately does come down to one game. It does. And even more ultimately down to one point. We're not there yet. We've got a lot of volleyball to play. But, well, not so much in a 15-point <laughs> game, but there's some volleyball yet to play. Yes. Good look at Lovett coach Mary Busick. So again, the freshman Carolyn Welsh, the freshman Libero serving over there. And so a child shall lead them. Is that appropriate in this case? She's one of the tough serves. Yeah. Another tough serve from one of only two Welsh. freshmen on the roster for Westminster. The only one who's played. Westminster is going to get the call on that one. They're up 8-4. Am I seeing this? And Welsh continues with that great serving run. Yeah. Okay. Again, take your time, young lady. Uh oh, another one. Wow. Yep, she hands another one. Oh, miscommunication on the front row. They're going to get four hits. And there's the second timeout. Mary Busick had yeah. no choice but to Man. stop this, this she run. Called, she called one down by three. She has to call one down by five. Yeah, she did. And again, we're to that biblical five-point lead that the biggest, it has equaled the biggest lead in this entire match. Only a couple of times before have we had a five-point lead. And we saw... Westminster come back from a five-point deficit to tie the game and nearly win the deciding game number four. Instead, the Lovett Lions earned the victory to even it at two all, and we are now in our fifth and deciding game. Coach Donna Braden, what's she saying? A lot of head shaking bear back and forth. Very emphatic. Whatever it is she's saying, she's saying with emphasis. Well, when rally score, I mean, she's basically talking about, I believe, I'm guessing, of course, but what I would believe she'd be talking about in particular is where the ball is likely to go on a good pass, no matter what. Well, if Carolyn Welsh continues to deliver all the way to a 15-point win, oh, wow. they're going to be carrying her around the gym on their shoulders <laughs> for an hour. you're right about. Another great serve. Oh, that's going to be a oh. back row attack. Well, now, well, there's some questioning going on. Well, here. what's going on is she's called for a back row attack, but she basically this is what's going to this is going to be replayed okay. because that was an errant call by the official. Okay. She was not. She's in the front row, so she's allowed to make that attack. Okay. All right. There's a good explanation, and if we had replay, we'd be able to see it. Another boy, Welsh just keeps delivering those yes, serves. Yes, she does. She's been flawless. From the left side, it falls. Off the outstretched fingertips of number 13, Carolyn Beatles. So the hemorrhaging has stopped for the moment for the Lovett Lions. Love it still. I know it doesn't sound like much being down by four, but it is a ton in this kind of game. Yep. When you're down by four and the other team only needs six to win, you're getting close to the fill zone. Yeah. Again, they come from the left side. That one bounced off the pole. It's out of bounds and back another point over to Love it. Yep. Point Love it. Another swing dog swing for Holly Sebastian that and everyone now desperately needed by her team. Setter Gail Jenks is serving. Not passed well. Guess who? Yep. Harley Sebastian off the block. Okay. They've scored three straight points to bring it back to a two point game and now Westminster calls timeout. Well again don't think for a second Jonna Braden thinks this is over. She knows better. She knows who her opposition is, and she knows what has to happen now, and she's going to get her team settled down and get back into rhythm. And there was some miscommunication on the pass that, that last couple of sequences. So I'm sure that'll be the first thing that Jonna Braden addresses. And over on the Lovett side, 
It's all about continuing to make sure that we're in the right place for what we think that our opposition is going to run. Well, you could cut the tension with a knife in this room wow. right now. It's it, just, it is it, astonishing. You can feel it. You can just feel it. There's... This is not, you know, the championship of the known universe with a billion dollar purse, but it, it, it might as well be. The pressure that these young people are, are handling and feeling and, you know, all the importance that the fans put on this, it's just, it all comes together in a situation like this. Okay. Big serve here. Yep. By Gail Jenks, the setter. She drops one in nicely. And that's going to be a point. Love it. And Westminster was going back to what has been their bread and butter play. They were going to the Kerry Green 31 swing, but the ball was not set high enough, so it was an errant set. Let's see if Jenks can draw him even to nine. Maggie Sinkler to the left side attack again for Harley Sebastian. They play it, though, on the Westminster side. Block by Lovett, still in play. Guess where? Yep. Wow, good defensive work by the Wildcats, but not that time. Nope, Ellie Hogan brought one up, but they couldn't deliver. Love it, ties it at nine. Oh my, oh my, oh my. As you said earlier, Brian, you could not script this up in a, in a Hollywood movie. No. Dug up. Harley Sebastian oh. dug up. Harley Sebastian with a soft touch. Hits into the block over by Janie Price. Over by Janie Price. And blocked. <laughs> wow. Up by a point. Love it is fighting back. Amazing. Now Gail Jenks has served. a great share of service winners to bring them up by one. Can right side. Oh yeah. That's going to they're going to get a touch. You can yes. almost not see it, but almost means it was there. It's right in front of the referee. Time out, Westminster. And he saw it. Yes. Right side attacker right in front of the referee and the referee on the stand had a clear look at that one cuz he hadn't if he hadn't called that one, there could have been a riot from the uh, Lovett fans behind him. You know, and you get the feeling that they're on the verge of riot on both <laughs> sides of the court. You know, any little thing that doesn't go their way is going to is going to evoke an, an an amazing reaction one way or the other. One way or the other. But uh, you know, that Lovett had came back from that oh. deficit. Oh, unreal! Absolutely amazing. Well, I'm not quite going to use the line, do you believe in miracles from the 1980 hockey win? Not yet, but I'm just, I've got it, I'm ready. I'm going to pull the trigger on that one. No matter which team wins, it's just about miraculous. Yeah, I would be surprised gone. if Westminster didn't go back to carry green on this attack. Now, Lovett, of course, knows this. Lovett wins game one. Westminster comes back with the miraculous two straight wins to go up two to one. Lovett draws even again with a win in game four in the closing seconds. And they get another one to drop. They are now up by two with four to play. They were down by five. Up by three. Up by with three, three to with play. three to play. We're in the zone. They were down by five just moments ago. Unbelievable. An eight point turnaround. Not a well passed ball again. Blocked, but Double. played. They kept it alive. Double hit. A double. And a lift. A lift, lift. a lift. Yep. And that's the right call. Yep, that's the right call. I think it was Ellie Hogan that went for the dig but lifted it up instead. And now here is Gail Jenks who has had a serving run. We didn't think there was any way that that uh, that Carolyn Welsh's serving run on the other side could be equal, but it has. Westminster finally. And I say finally gets a point. Carrie They'll Green serve down by three. And it was Carrie Green with, uh, she didn't get the right set, but she did a nice job of faking the Lovett defense out. And that's Carrie Green right there at the net, number 10. Now, serving for Westminster, number five, Mason Rooney. Left-hander. Yep, left-handed server. 
Maggie Sinkler handles it. Here comes Harley Sebastian, but she's going to get a call. Net violation. She was under. The problem was the set, the, the pass was too tight to the net. So it gives a automatic point back to Westminster. A gift wow. of sorts. 11, serving 13. Mason Rooney. There's that quick play by Green again, but it didn't work. They're going to set it over. Covered. Yep. Here comes Harley Sebastian into the block. They, they got can't her. Play it. Yep, they got her. They well knew put. that where they were going. She's been over there, what it seemed like, for most of the game. And that time, Westminster, to their credit, was ready with a double block up for Harley Sebastian. Al Michaels' voice is still ringing in my ears. <laughs> I tell you. Now it's Westminster performing a little miracle of their own. Down by one. They need three to win. Maggie Sinkler. Oh, and Carrie Green comes over quick. Up and over like lightning. Pass too tight to the net that time. And Sinkler's made so many great passes, it's a shame that one happened to be too tight. But 13 all, and we play to two. Yep. Tied at 13. Two points by either team wins it. Mason Rooney to Sinkler. Not passed. Not passed well, but the Lovett got a break at the ball back. Harley Sebastian's got to go soft this time. Green back to her. They were waiting. Up goes Hogue. Up goes Beatles. And it's down on the Westminster side. And guess where we are. Yeah, we're at match point for Lovett with the big hitter, Harley Sebastian, serving, but she is very effective in serve as yes, well. She and is. It doesn't matter. All she's got to do is keep the get the ball in play. And she did. Yep. Not well struck at all. Oh, they've got to come over. Free ball for Lovett. They can take their time and set this one. It's for the number 11 this time. Westminster plays it. Another free, free ball. ball. Sinkler. Sinkler. Over to the left side. For Mary Bethany Vincent, and they do it. Absolutely unbelievable. They I have, lost twice in the regular season to the Westminster Wildcats, but when it counts, the Lovett Lions come back to deliver, and those rabid Lion fans are, are giving them everything they came for in their dreams to hear. Listen to this. And you've got to feel so bad for Westminster. Either side losing that match, it was, it's going to be it was going to be a heartbreak. Wait until you see the final scoring summary, because we had one point games, two point. There it is, no. two point. You have to win by two, which is exactly what Lovett did in game one. Exactly what Westminster did in game two. A huge three point win for Westminster in game three. Two points again in game four for the Lovett Lions, and by the necessary two points in game five. The Lovett Lions are the Georgia High School Association Class AA Volleyball Champions. What more can you say? Well, I tell you, that was, you know, there was nothing you can say there except amazing play on both sides. And since both sides knew each other so well, there was no, not a lot of surprise there. Well, we have to hear, we have to hear from the winning coach. We must hear from, well, who's your player? Oh, my player's got to be Harley Sebastian. Yep, Harley Sebastian. They knew where it was coming from, and she delivered it anyway. anyway. Ultimately, she served up the, the match winner. She kept bringing the ball and put the, keeping the ball in play. They're in disbelief, as you would expect. <laughs> We've, how many, you know, fans at Beatle concerts, how many young women, emotional young women have we seen on so many occasions? Let all the emotions pour out. That's exactly what's happening down there right now. Now they're being asked, of course, to take a seat and, and yep. sort of 
you know, gather some decorum for the official <laughs> presentation. Good luck with that. <laughs> well, it's, it's absolutely, I, I, I've done volleyball for a long time from a broadcast perspective, Brian, but that's and maybe in the top two matches I have done along with the 1996 Olympic Championship between Holland and uh, Italy. Same kind of match took place. That was before the days of rally, of rally score took place. So it was the same kind of match. Maybe it went a little bit longer because it wasn't rally score, but it was the same format. Well, same I'm, thing, I'm, back and forth. I'm proud and honored to have been along oh. for one of Phil Bush's top two. That was as good as it can get. Well, I don't know. It might get even better. Is it possible here in the rest of this GHSA state championship? But again, no, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of hung heads over there on the Westminster Wildcat side as they accept the runner-up trophies. They have earned the championship uh, before. Lovett has not. And indeed, their third time was third a charm, time a charm it was. t-shirts and warm-up. There's some kind of mojo there. You know, you love it when it works, and you sort of forget when it doesn't. Well, it certainly did this time, and my, oh, my. Yep. What an amazing scene this is. So Maggie Sinkler and Gail Jenks, two of the, two of the seniors on the, uh, the Lovett Lions team, going over to accept the first honors as champions. There they are with the uh, the Molten USA Volleyball and the winner's trophy. Number five, Gail Jenks, who had such a great serving run. And Maggie Sinkler, who is going to be our player of the game for her solid performance. Yes, Harley Sebastian had the big, you know, the Hollywood highlights, the big Sports Center highlight hits, but Maggie Sinkler's quiet captaincy in the backcourt is what kept them in the game continually and, yeah she runs that backcourt and if she wasn't there a lot of those balls that uh mackie's that uh carly sebastian hits don't get hit there it is once again the scoring summary two points two points three points two points and then two points again when it counted Well, the, the ceremonies uh, are completed out on the court. The Lovett fans are waiting for their opportunity to go over and mob <laughs> the Lovett players. And I think there's, I think they share our sentiment that uh, this was as good as it gets. The price of admission was more than worth it. And I tell you, what a match and amazing back and forth play. Well, I'm seeing one guy walking across the court and he's doing that pantomiming that heart thumping thing. You know, wow. he's thumping on his chest. That was a heart stopper at every turn. Okay, I'm trying to uh, going to try and get in positions we can talk to our player of the game and.
Okay. And so you've enjoyed the 2A championship match and an epic match it was won by the Lovett Lions. This is Phil Bush and for my broadcast partner, Brian Drever. We'll be rejoining you shortly for the 3A championship match. Thank you.